So now uh, we'll hear from the Columbus Mastic for 2020. By the way, I already asked some of the folks from Ohio today. You may have seen the stories about the uh, nuclear reactor, the guy that had the nuclear reactor in Columbus, and they had to shut down on Fort, they had to evacuate 40 homes. He's just a lunatic. It wasn't a real nuclear reactor, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> that was the story, the new story from yesterday. <coughs> you ready? chair of the convention and this is Dale Mazzola, <coughs> the vice chair of our convention and um, we last year sat in front of you and um, asked for guidance. We settled on dates that were August 20 through 23rd instead of overlapping Kung Zealand. Um, in the process of uh, confirming things with our hotel that we had presented um, we had some difficulties deciding on some things and we decided to change hotels so we're now at the Sheraton Capitol Square which is closer to downtown Columbus uh, next door to the State House. Uh, we have the whole facility to ourselves which makes it a lot nicer um, and we're really excited about bringing NASVIC to Columbus. Ten seconds. So, what do you see as um, your current biggest challenge or thing that's causing you the most stress? Um, honestly, I will be honest, getting volunteers, and I know that's a constant struggle for all, all conventions, but being so close to Con Zealand and having so many friends that love to work on conventions has been a struggle to find more people to have on our team. I did have a masquerade director volunteer tonight, so I'm very excited about that. And that's my biggest struggle, and that's what's causing stress. Uh, could, we've, we've had a request, by the way, for anybody who's doing presentations to please um, move the mics a little closer to your mouths. Thank you very much. Um, somebody wants to know if Jenny's ice cream is going to be doing any of your catering. <laughs> it may not do catering, but we are right there close by. It's right on the Columbus Commons. It's within walking distance, and uh, that has been a discussion to have it brought into the fun suite. So from the point of view of attendance, how many people are you expecting? How many will your site take? And what will you do if those two numbers don't line up? We have several. Uh, budget lines we are planning out. We have a budget for 300, budget for 700, 900, and 1200. And so 
We have uh, the capacity to get up to 1,200. We have overflow hotels that we're discussing things with. Um, if they don't pan out, then we will cross that bridge when we come to it. To what extent is this going to um, butt up against moving for a high state? That is a good question. Um, from what I understand, uh, it shouldn't be that big of a deal because we are further south from Ohio State. Um, the campus is several blocks north um, from us, so it shouldn't be a big deal with that move in, move out. I do not know if it is a game weekend, though. I don't believe it is. Dale? I'm checking. He's checking. checking. That's a very big question. So, what's currently got you most excited about having an aspect in Columbus? Um, the most exciting thing that I have to report right now is that we will be hosting the Libertarian Preacher Society's Prometheus Awards um, at our convention during the Masquerade Information. And F. Paul Wilson is one of our additional guests that we've lined up. Okay, we did confirm it is after move-in. It is. So we will not compete against move-in. It probably is a game weekend, but I don't have their new schedule yet, so I can't tell if it is an Oklahoma or away game. But like Lisa said, it is downtown versus campus area. Right. So there's a couple miles between us, and I don't think it will be a big impact. Some of the downtown areas that we've ended up in for various kinds of conventions suffer because although they have restaurant scene, it's during the week for luncheons and things like that. It shuts down on the weekends. To what extent is that going to be an issue that close to the state house? That is something that I've been considering, and we are working on talking to some of the restaurants in the area to stay home, to stay open a little later. Uh, there is a Chinese restaurant within walking distance that is open to that. We've also discussed with having multiple food trucks come in in the late evening from 7 to 10 o'clock, as well as there is the, a large potential. Um, Ohio is one, or actually Columbus is one of the bigger, for bigger states, bigger cities for delivery through like Grubhub or Amazon Eats or places like that if you're interested. So we have that option available. And the, the restaurant there is relatively inexpensive compared to some hotels I've stayed at. Speaking of parking um, in a downtown area, what's, what's parking, the parking situation for you? The LA parking is $23 a day with in and out privileges. Self-parking is also available at, in an attached garage, you take a specific elevator up directly to the hotel, and that runs anywhere from 15 to $18, but in some cases there are also one block away walking parking that is five to, set, five to $10. So how can we help? What do you need? How can the community help you right now? If you're not going to Conzi Lind and you're willing to volunteer, come to us tomorrow morning. Um, we have a meeting for recruitment and the other more frequently asked questions and just offer your talents and skills and um, support us. If you can't come, um, we still could use your support financially. Uh, if you want to offer some sponsorships, that's also another way you can help. So for people who basically you know, are trying to come to this um, NASFIC, um, what options are there for getting there without driving? You can fly. I mean, yeah. There's uh, uh, train. There's not train goes up to Cleveland, but there is a direct bus from Cleveland to Columbus that drops off one block away from right, the, the convention our, our area. Um, Columbus is an international airport, so it does have international flights from multiple locations. It's a major hub of Southwest Airlines, so if you're flying Southwest, <coughs> it's a direct connection for a lot of locations. Um, driving is pretty straightforward from Interstate 70 or Interstate 71 and it's Central to Ohio, so it should be pretty straightforward to get to us. Should we ask them? All right, why not? Tell us how far the Tiki Bar is from the Sheraton. <laughs> the Tiki Bar? Are you thinking of the I have tiki? no idea. All I do is ask the question. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Con Tiki, which was in the Whitehall area, closed, wow, almost a decade ago. Um, yeah, it was off Broad Street, isn't it? Yeah, it was off of East Broad Street. The owners decided that they were 
done hosting it and it, it's <coughs> sorely missed. Yes. Okay. Um, but that's the only tiki bar that I know as of the record. And where is that in relation to the Sheraton? It is on North Grand Avenue, so it is downtown. Yeah, it's downtown. <laughs> okay, so somewhere. It's in the same city. At some point, I really need to get someone to explain to me Americans' obsession with tiki bars. It is within Wilkinston's. Yeah, there you go. And, and it's probably also within stumbling distance. <laughs> After having many. If there are no more questions for the nice folks from Columbus, we wish them well and they have a nice Nasdaq. Thank you.